Audio 4.1 So yesterday we took the train from La Paz, Bolivia, into Peru, stopping at Puno, and today we are going to visit the floating islands on Lake Titicaca. I can't wait. Ever since I first heard about these islands in a geography class many years ago, I've wanted to see them. Actually, I don't really enjoy boat trips, but I'm sure the water on the lake will be quite calm, as it's a clear sunny day. It's quite cold though, so I'm going to take an extra sweater to keep warm. I'm really interested in finding out more about how people live there. I believe we'll be able to ask them questions through a guide. I'd love to know what people eat. A lot of fish, I suppose. I'd also like to know what they think the future holds for them and their families. Do they think their children will stay on the islands? What effect is technology going to have on their lives? I know they already have solar power and even black and white TVs. Just thought, it would be great to have some photos for the blog, so I'll take my camera too. Just hope I don't drop it in the water. Audio 4.2 one. It was the end of September and a beautiful sunny day. Autumn is the most beautiful season here and the leaves on the trees were beginning to turn golden in places. As we climbed through the forest, we enjoyed the fresh air and the smell of the soil. Moving slowly up the steep winding path, we came to the edge of the forest and suddenly we could see a gorgeous lake at the edge of a mountain range in the distance. The peaks and cliffs of the mountains were partly covered in snow even at this time of the year. The scenery was just amazing. 2. We had been walking all day, and it was slowly getting dark. We had seen gorgeous mountains with lovely greenery, refreshing waterfalls, and clear pools amongst the rocks. We had enjoyed playing in the pools in the hot sunshine, but at the end of the day, we had descended back into the valley. Walking down towards where we were staying for the night, the sunset was amazing, beautiful and red, with the silhouettes of the palm trees in the distance. I don't think I've ever seen such a beautiful and unusual landscape. Audio 4.3 Good afternoon and welcome to Science Matters. Walking through the park yesterday, it was full of people enjoying the sunshine. Recent research, however, suggests that people are spending less time outdoors. One study looked at trends in visits to national parks in the United States, Japan and Spain and found that the number of visits had gone down by 18% since the late 1980s. A recent British study found that even during the summer, people spend just one to two hours outside per day. So... Why is this happening, and what should we do about it? Our science reporter, Julie Mares, has been researching into the benefits of being outdoors. So, Julie, why do we stay indoors so much? Hello. Well, it may be that rather than enjoying the beauty of nature, we prefer to sit in front of a screen. Statistics show that people in the U.S. now spend around eight and a half hours a day looking at a screen, and this trend will definitely spread around the world as smartphones become more common. Another explanation is that more people live in cities. In 1950, 79% of the UK population lived in cities, but that percentage is likely to rise to around 92% by 2030. 
and even traditionally less urbanized countries may end up in a similar situation. For example, Botswana in 1950 had less than 3% of its population living in cities. Now it has about 61%, and this percentage will probably rise further over the next few years. But does it actually matter if we don't get outside much? Well, yes, obviously there are the physical benefits. We know that people who live near green spaces are more likely to be physically active. In fact, nearly 45% of Californian teens who live near a park take part in physical activities for at least one hour a day, at least five days a week, whereas only one-third of teens who don't have access to a nearby park have the same level of physical activity. But there's more than that. According to researchers at Harriet Watt University in Edinburgh, people's brains actually change when they spend time in natural environments, reducing stress and improving mood. The Japanese have known this for some time. Shinrin-yoku, or forest bathing, is simply visiting a forest or other natural area and walking slowly, taking in everything you see, hear, smell, and even taste. Scientific research shows that walking in the forest for 30 minutes will reduce depression and lower your blood pressure. They even think it might prevent you from becoming ill. Really? That seems very hard to believe. How's that? It seems that the trees give off chemicals which help to keep you healthy. One study showed a 50% increase in the white blood cells needed to fight illness after a two-hour walk. Research taking place at the moment will tell us more about how this works. The Japanese government has already built 48 official forest bathing trails and say they will definitely build another 52 within the next 10 years. Really? That's a lot. Do you think it could become as popular in other countries? Yes, it probably will. In fact, South Korea has already started building its own forest bathing centers and other countries, like Finland, may soon follow. Audio 4.4 1. In the U.S., people now spend eight and a half hours a day looking at a screen, and this trend will definitely spread around the world as smartphones become more common. 2. The percentage of British people living in cities is likely to rise to 92% by 2030. 3. Countries such as Botswana, where in 1950 only 3% of people lived in a city, may end up in a similar situation. 4. Nowadays, 61% of Botswana's population lives in cities, and this percentage will probably rise further. 5. Walking in a forest for 30 minutes improves mood and might even stop you getting ill. 6. After a two-hour walk, some people showed a 50% increase in the white blood cells needed to help fight disease. 7. The Japanese government will build 52 more forest bathing trails within the next 10 years, and other countries may follow. Audio 4.5 1. This trend will definitely spread around the world. This trend will definitely spread around the world. 2. The number is likely to rise. The number is likely to rise. Three. This percentage probably won't rise much further. This percentage probably won't rise much further.
Four. People who live near green spaces are more likely to be active. People who live near green spaces are more likely to be active. Audio four point six. One. Neat and tidy. Two. In a bit of a mess. Audio four point seven. Understanding consonant vowel linking. When one word finishes in a consonant. And the next word begins with a vowel, or the other way round. The consonant often becomes attached to the vowel. This means that it is difficult to hear the correct words. The person you are listening to actually said, "Alaska," but you hear "Alaska." While you are listening, you have to check that what you hear makes sense in the situation. Audio four point eight. One. What a mess! Two. In a while. Three. Take up too much space. Four. Peace and quiet. Five. A nice drink. Six. A big apartment. Audio four point nine. One. What a mess this room is! We need to tidy it up. Two. I hope to finish the decorating in a while. Three. I wanted to put the bookshelf here, but it takes up too much space. Four. The best thing about this house is the peace and quiet. Five. Would you like a nice drink? Six. She lives in a big apartment in Berlin. Audio four point ten. Can you tell me about your problem? Well, I'm a hoarder. I just can't throw things away, so my house is full of stuff. I'm starting to run out of space. What kind of stuff do you keep? <laughs> Everything: newspapers, old yogurt pots, clothes, toys. Old yogurt pots. Why do you keep those? Well, because they might come in useful one day. Well, you know, I might decide to grow plants in them. But don't they take up a lot of space? Where do you keep them? In my shower cubicle. Oh, <laughs> you're joking. No, seriously. I've got a load of newspapers too, going back to nineteen ninety-five. They're in a shed in the garden. <laughs> so your house must be pretty full then. <laughs> There's no room for anything. Our front garden is full of old machines like dishwashers and fridges. <gasps> Why?
What a nightmare! And how does your wife feel about this? Well, to be honest, she's not very happy. But what can I do about it? Audio four point eleven. So, how's it going? Enjoying your new flat? Yes, I love it. Ah, <gasps> you've got a fantastic view from the windows. Yes, we're on the top floor. I spent the whole weekend going up and down the stairs with boxes. Yes, I can see. Look, make yourself at home. Have a seat. Uh, where? Yes, I see what you mean. Well, why don't you sit on a box? No, don't worry. I can make room on this sofa if I just uh, move this suitcase. <laughs> How did you manage to move all your stuff over a weekend? Oh,、uh, I didn't do it all at the weekend. I took some time off from work last week. It'll look great once you've got everything unpacked. You've got a lot of room here. Yeah, it's so much bigger than my old place. Mind you, I've really got too much stuff. This old sofa and chairs take up so much space, and there's furniture in the flat already. Maybe you should get rid of your old furniture. Yes, perhaps. I think I really need to get everything unpacked first, and then I can see what I need and don't need. Are you going to give me a hand? Sure. Audio four point twelve. Hello, Bell's Bistro. Oh, hello. I had lunch at your restaurant today, and I think I may have left my mobile phone there on one of the tables. I wonder if you could check for me. Certainly. Could I just take some details first? Yes, of course. Could you tell me the make of the phone? Yes, it was a. Audio four point thirteen. Hello. How can I help you? Hello. I understand that the hotel has a gym. Yes, that's right. It's in the basement. Thank you. Could you tell me the opening hours, please? It's open from seven a.m. until nine p.m. Thank you. That's great. Can I help you with anything else? Yes. Just one last question. Do I need to take a towel with me, or are they provided? Audio four point fourteen. Hello, Grand Hotel. How can I help you? Hello. I think I may have left my briefcase at reception this morning. I wonder if you could check if it's being handed in. Certainly. Could I just take some details? What colour was it? It's black, and it has my initials on it: M H G, Miguel Hernández García. Thank you. One moment. Yes, we have it. That's great. I wonder if I could come and pick it up this evening. Yes, any time. Can I help you with anything else? No, that's all. Thank you for your help, though. I really appreciate it.